Good evening, welcome to the National Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Our celebrant for tonight's Mass is Father Dominic de Jesus. Please stand and join in singing our processional hymn.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie
Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant we pray that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity in life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one, and shall share in the lamb, in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year-old male, and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the do two doorposts, and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate. With pilgrimage to the Lord, as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all, for he knew who would betray him. 
For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed his feet, when he had washed their feet, and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that, I, so that as have I done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. I believe that this portion of the gospel encompasses the entire message of this liturgy of the word. Christ came to earth to give us a model to follow. Do we not realize what he's done for us? Sometimes we fail to see all these wonders, all of these things the Lord has done for us. We, like Simon Peter, don't really see the good intentions due to pride, due to our minds playing tricks on us. And again, we really fail to see this example Christ has set for us. If he washed the disciples' feet, or our feet, if you want to be technical about it, we ought to wash one another's feet. Not literally, obviously. He used this physical example to say metaphorically that we have to serve one another. He came to serve us, and he set this precedent of service, of humility, and of compassion for us to follow as well. This liturgy. Or rather, the liturgy we're celebrating rather early is the most, you know, one of the most important days of the entire liturgical calendar. We are celebrating the Last Supper, where the Eucharist was first instituted. It was on that very day where Jesus, loving his friends, his disciples to the end, took the bread, said the blessing, and passed it on to his disciples. And said those words that you hear every day or every Sunday if you go to Mass only on Sundays. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body. He did the same thing with the chalice. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant.
throughout <clears throat> his life on this earth. Our Lord Jesus Christ set example after example. He established these rules that shape our beliefs, that shape Christianity as we know it. He loved, and so we should love as well. He served, and therefore we should serve as well. It is these examples that we unfortunately take for granted the most in today's modern world. We forget to give thanks for our friends, for our families. We forget to serve them. We forget the virtues of hope, faith, and charity. Blinded by our humanities, blinded by pride, by greed, by what we have failed to do. We forget to give thanks for everything. And this is essentially what the Eucharist is. In all of its dimensions, the Eucharist has always been about giving thanks. Thank you for what you've done for us. In our own humanities, we fail to realize that this man has loved us and loves us. I'd like to point out that the word Eucharist comes from the Greek word Eucharistomen. And that word, as I just said, means to give thanks. But why should we give thanks? Isn't this liturgy, isn't it the Mass, the sacrifice of the Mass, about <coughs> commemorating all of this, commemorating Christ's sacrifice on the cross? And yes, that's exactly what it's about. And that's exactly why we should be giving thanks. Why do we turn our backs on the man who gave it all for us? Why do we turn our backs on the man who wants to love us? Who bends down on his knees and washes our feet? No matter who we are, no matter your political affiliation, no matter your race, your sex, your sexual orientation, your gender. It doesn't matter where you've been. He just wants you to be here. He just wants you to come home. And it is our job, as Christians, to make that happen. I've seen, both on this platform and in real life, people who bicker amongst each other over petty little reasons. A misplaced model. A liturgical preference there. Someone that's salty that they, they that they got banned. We are failing to see division we create amongst ourselves every day. Where is the love? Where is Christ in all of this? You might wonder. Aren't we a Catholic group? 
shouldn't we be more united? Shouldn't we be more charitable towards each other? And the answer is yes. We should be more charitable towards one another. Why aren't we doing that? Why must we divide? We don't do all of this. We don't commemorate this sacrifice Christ made for us. Simply to bicker, to argue, and to keep splitting each other up into the group A, group B, group C, group D. We claim to be united in Christ. But if you ask me, that's not what I'm seeing. If we're going by the actual real-life liturgical calendar, Lent ends in a week. Palm Sunday is right around the corner. I mean, we're celebrating Holy Thursday now, just so we can have time to meditate on the actual Holy Thursday, on the actual Holy Week. With that in mind, I want to ask you, what's stopping you from loving your brother? What's stopping you from serving your brother? Oh, because he was being mean to me the other day. So what? Christ got nailed to a cross by people who hated him, by people who wanted him gone. And instead of hating them, he chose to say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In the gospel we have just read, It says that Jesus loved them to the end. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. What does that say to you? What does that say to all of us? Let's put aside our difference and unite. Let's put aside these differences and wash each other's feet, metaphorically speaking. We want to live peacefully. We want to live with our eyes turned towards Christ. And yet we continue to argue about minuscule things that happen. Let's not do that. We are all disciples of Christ. We are all here with a bit different purpose in life, an individual purpose. Some of us may get married. Some of us may become priests. Some of us may become simple, late, consecrated, late people. Some may even become nuns or religious people or <coughs> religious brothers or monks. It doesn't matter. We're all here with our purpose in life. So instead of being like Judas, who allowed himself to be tempted by the devil, who betrayed Christ, and later on took his own life as a result of his overwhelming guilt. Let's be like Simon Peter. First Roman Pontiff. The very first leader of our holy Catholic Church. Who knew Who knew that he had made a mistake? Who knew that he needed to work on himself constantly? He was given the keys to the church for a reason. 
And God didn't see the fact that he had made these so many mistakes. God saw something in him that prompted him to say, You are Peter, and upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against her. Just like him, he has a purpose for all of us. But we won't be able to work towards finding what that purpose is if we aren't the living embodiment of his love on this earth. Throughout Lent, I have told you, what can I do to be a better Christian? How can these last few Sundays, how can the messages of these Gospels help me to work towards becoming a better Christian, a better person, a better son, a better father, if people are watching this like that, a better student, a better whatever. The key and the answer to those questions is in the central theme of these Gospels, which is love and service. It's simple and easy. In theory, but when you put it into practice, that's when it becomes difficult and that's when many people just quit. Because being a Christian is not easy. Being a Christian is very difficult. Being a Christian is very challenging. We will face many storms, many trials, many tribulations. But as long as we place our trust in Christ, who sacrificed himself for us so that we could have eternal life, we can do it. He is our strength. As we continue with this celebration, be reminded that Christ did not come here to judge you. He did not come here to leave you aside. He didn't come here to cast you out. He came here to save you. He came here to love you. Love him and let yourself be loved by him.
With faith in Christ's generosity, let us offer our prayers and petitions. For friends is our Pope, Francois, our Apostolic Administrator, all the clergy, that the Lord may bless them and strengthen them in their commitment to serve us in God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all seminarians and those studying for religious life, that the Lord will bless them in their journey, and God will send more workers to his vineyard we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, prayer. hear our prayer. For the lay ministers of our parish, that the Lord will bless them with wisdom and inspiration in the performance of the special tasks that they have been given, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the candidates for full communi communion who will enter the church at the Easter Vigil, that they may heed the Lord's call to service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died believing in the gift of eternal life. May they know Lord, the Lord's love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, we pray for our own needs and for the special intentions of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, your love for creation is on full display on this most sacred night. Grant, we pray, that through the mysteries of this Eucharist, we may practice and learn to love and to serve one another. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the Liturgy of the Eucharist.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. <laughs> For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong, and as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept these gifts, these offerings, these holy, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Francois, our Apostolic Administrator, and his assistant bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith.
celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenes, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make you as to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. And <clears throat> order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving thanks, he set the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection of the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept, the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask, we ask you, Almighty God, 
Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us for this sign of praise <laughs> and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, <coughs> Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. This at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Blood of Christ to keep me safe for eternal life. Body of Christ. Body of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Thank you.